Well, speaking of the topic of the Pro League players, one well, of the Kespa players, Pro League has been going on. We've got a couple of results to talk about. Uh, there were only four games <laughs> this past week. Oh, man, you're so happy, RNG. Man, I am so excited <laughs> for this. Uh, I know where this is going <laughs> to. <laughs> Before we get into the recap, I want to show the graphics with the, uh, the results of the of the week. Uh, four games, a couple of interesting results there. As we can see, Samson Khan winning again 4-1 over teammate. Wounds and Stars taking out CJ. SKT1, the closest match of the day. And they only dropped two maps against STX Soul. And then KT Rolster 4-0's EGTL. Means the overall standings look like this as we reach the end of round four. Wounds and Stars, look at the lead these guys have. They yeah, are amazing. plus 29. That means they're 19 points ahead of the second place team, KT Rolster. They are crushing absolutely everybody. Now let's jump into the recap and see just how week four played out. <laughs> After a couple of tough losses last week, Samsung Khan returns to their winning ways with a decisive 4 1 victory over Team 8. Team 8's Terminator continues to be one of their most consistent performers, but the rest of his lineup fell flat to the convincing play of the likes of Jongbi and Stork. Stork looking particularly impressive in his macro game victory against Cure, easily winning fight after fight with his well-upgraded Zealot Templar-centric army. Stork's win is his second in a row in the Pro League, a needed boost for him and his team after underwhelming losses in five straight Pro League games. The Wungjin Stars continue to be one of the most dominant forces in all of the Pro League with another crushing victory in Week 4. This time, their victim was second place team CJ Intis. And it has to be said, the gap between first and second has never looked wider. Only Hero was able to come through for the CJ squad as the rest of its impressive lineup toppled to the strength of the Stars. Effort versus SOS, aka Shy, was probably the most exciting game of the series and for good reason. These guys went punch for punch for nearly an hour. One play really defined and determined the outcome of the game with effort landing a neural parasite on SOS's mothership and subsequently vortexing the Protoss army. Ironically, this vortex served more to help SOS than it did to hurt him. It protected his Void Ray Colossus army from effort long enough for reinforcing stalkers to get in positions and clean up the Corruptor Force. While the game would rage on for a while longer, SOS's ability to retain that expensive army proved to be too much of an advantage for effort to overcome as he would ultimately fall to the Wungjin Protoss. Wungjin Stars take out CJ Intis 4-1. The closest match of Week 4 would be SK Telecom T1 versus STX Seoul, and let's be honest, it still really wasn't all that close. While STX did manage to pick up two wins on the backs of Trap and the always strong innovation, SKT Zergs continue to deliver, booking once again three wins for their team. Sax3 is really beginning to establish himself as a ZVZ sniper, winning four out of his last five Zerg versus Zerg games and delivering once more against STX. The strength of Saxry's play is really its variety. He mixed it up against Hiva, punishing his opponent for not scouting with some nasty slow Zergling Baneling play. Check out this happy little guy. Nothing to see here, folks. After taking this much damage, there's really no way to come back against an opponent who just continues to lay on the pressure. Saxry, of course, realizing his position, did just that, cleaning up Hiva and clocking in another win for SKT1. And then it happened. For three weeks, KT Rolster has been on the slide. Flash, the ultimate weapon, has a losing record in round three play. Five matches in a row, KT Rolster has lost. The one-time first place team in all of the SK Planet Pro League falling all the way to the cusp of fourth place. We knew they had a secret weapon. We knew they were saving him for the playoffs. With those playoff hopes dwindling, it was time to bring out the big guns, the Hitman cometh. That's right, Hitman makes his first appearance in the round, and yes, it was everything we all knew it could be. It was high aggression and high economy, with some big plays being made early on with Banelings as Hitman would macro up behind it. The mid-game would be dominated by Muta Ling Bane, but why is Hitman so good, guys? Transitions, and he nailed them, attacking, defending, and harassing on all points with ease. Hitman would smoothly transition up to Hive, where his tech of choice would not be Ultras, it would not be Broods, it would be both. Why? Because, hey, why the hell not? 
Check out how Hitman decimates siege tanks with Banelings. This won't be the first time you see this, folks. When you've got this much money, it doesn't matter how you kill those tanks. Not only does Hitman put on a great show, hitting his timings and transitions smoothly, but he also shows off some incredible late-game army control. Play of the week worthy. Check out this engagement from Hitman, once more showing us that Banelings are a fine tool for dealing with siege tanks, especially when you don't want to waste your Ultras or your Broodlords for that same purpose. What is up? I'm Hitman! Hitman very clearly outplaying and outclassing Puma, riding the KT Rolster ship, and single-handedly leading his team to its first victory in weeks and a 4-0 sweep of EG Team Liquid to boot. Hitman is our player of the week. Hitman's play is the play of the week. And the Pro League Week 4 update is done. <laughs> 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 That's right, guys. <laughs> KT revealing their secret weapon. Hitman is here to stay. He will be playing again tonight. Oh, and his God. next victim will be Innovation. Yes, Hitman don't care that it's the best TVZ in the world. He's going to crush him, and he's going to do it on Antigua Shipyard. Be sure to check that out. It all happens later Does this innovation evening. Innovation have two NASL season championships? No. Hitman's fine, man. Hitman's fine. Because Puma did. <laughs> yes, yeah. th That's there's the saying. joke. I was really confused <laughs> okay. for a second. I'll get that. <laughs> but I now really, I get it. <laughs> but actually, this is a terrible thing to do because you are just describing some sort of <laughs> engagement that's absolutely phenomenal. Look how he crushes all these tanks and he loses 16 Bailey. <laughs> and then you talk about a phenomenal engagement where the Ultras go left, the Zerglings stay here, the Rootlots are like, shall we go? No, you know what? Let the Bailings go first. <laughs> Oh, what a game by Hitman. Uh, the the, the genius, down. this is the genius of it, Kevin. He had like four Broodlords and four Ultras. <laughs> by throwing away all the Banelings, he got to make more Broodlords and Ultras. It all makes sense. He sure did. It, it's, it's higher level, it's higher level gameplay. I don't expect you guys to understand. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm on your level. <laughs> it's the beauty of the Hitman. Pro League's been a lot of fun. The Wounded Stars <laughs> kicking so much ass. And uh, you know what? <laughs> Round four is, is starting soon. Round three actually yeah. ends this week. So, <coughs> Welcome back, Mr. Bias. I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's been great, man. It has been so much fun. Um, in, the, in, in celebration of the Pro League, we did take some time to profile one of the hottest teams in the Pro League. No, it's not Hitman's team. It's <laughs> SKT1, who on the back of their Zerg play have been on fire. Check it out. Teams are crucial to the world of esports and vital to the growth of individuals. One such team, SK Telecom T1, has been around for quite some time. We reached out to them to get their opinion and what their goals are as a team, and this is what they had to say. SK Telecom T1 is a professional esports team under KESPA, the Korean Esports Association. The team was formed originally by Lim Boxer Yo Wan under the name Orion in 2002. Boxer is one of the most recognized and accomplished figures in the world of competitive gaming, with 16 first place tournament victories, including multiple Star Leagues and World Cyber Games Grand Finals. He now coaches the StarCraft II T1 players. SK Telecom T1 currently has an active StarCraft II roster of 13 players, plus a five-man team for League of Legends. They have also supported FPS teams. T1, signifying Team First, is also part of SK Sports, which includes the baseball team SK Wyverns and basketball team SK Knights. What are the goals of SK Telecom T1? How important are the results? What are the team expectations of the players and vice versa? Who better to answer those questions than the man himself boxer the primary goal to make all those who cheer for t1 happy when it comes to results compared to popularity it is impossible to satisfy esports fans with players popularity alone i think the team's results will help the team's appeal to leave a better impression to more fans when it comes to player team expectations in exchange of supplying a steady income and the best possible practicing environment the team expects players to fulfill their goals and passion with that we expect T1 to become a successful story that is satisfying to the fans. But what do the players expect from their team? Best, a salary and a stable pro gamer lifestyle that reflects results. Fantasy, a stable practicing environment and compensation for results. Bisu, to acquire incentives or a rise in salary when displaying good results. Parting, 
Stable practicing environment coupled with a salary and incentives. Hello, Anaheim. Pay attention. I will dominate. It's clear that results are the main priority for the team. Since 2012, Major League Gaming Spring Championship in Anaheim, California, they have participated in MLG and GSL tournaments. Pro League, the year-long tournament in South Korea, takes precedence. Along with results, a team has certain obligations to be a marketing asset to their sponsor. Sponsorship is key to the survival of esports teams around the globe. SK Telecom is a South Korean wireless telecommunications operator and member of the SK Group, one of South Korea's largest conglomerates. Team official from SK Telecom T1 stated, As a representative icon of Korean esports, the exposure of T1 will help strengthen the image of SK Telecom. T1 represents and signifies team first. Not only does the term apply to the results, but it also applies to the support of players and for the furtherance of the development of the esports culture. I believe media exposure and marketing plays an important role in establishing these aspects. Placing first in 15 tournaments since 2003, including multiple pro leagues, SK Telecom T1 will continue their esports legacy in South Korea and around the globe, making all those who cheer for T1 very happy. Helping individuals to accomplish their dreams and goals along with helping them financially are quite admirable goals to have. Thank you SK Telecom T1 and Boxer for your responses. We wish you, your players, and your entire team the best of luck in Pro League this season and in the future. If you want to be featured on The Pulse or NASL, go ahead and send me an email, clutch at nasl.tv. Teams are vital to the world of esports. Thanks a lot, Josh. I like how all the SKT1 <laughs> players are like, I want to get paid. Yeah. You guys watching that? It's like, important yeah. for salary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to play for the games and salary.